Well, I am so, so pleased to have Dr. Michelle Doucette on the podcast today. She is an expert in zero balancing, and I'm very excited to have her on. Michelle, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, you are a doctor of chiropractic care, correct? Correct. I'm a chiropractor and a certified zero balancer. Okay. And a zero balancing instructor. Very good. Very good. So in layman's terms, if I were to come to you to receive a zero balancing service, can you give me the sales pitch? (laughs) Well, the first sales pitch is that it feels fantastic. Um, It's a very gentle work. It's on the level of bones and joints. So it's it's very gentle, but it feels very deep at the same time because it's working on the deep tissues of the body. And yeah, it's it's quite blissful. And people tend to go into an expanded state of consciousness. So it's it kind of transports people to another time and place. And mostly I will tell people that it feels great. It it relieves and releases tension patterns that are held in the body. And these tension patterns are patterns in which illness is often embedded. So we all, everyone can resonate with the idea of, you know, we hold our shoulders up, our back gets tense, our hip muscles get tense, our jaw is tense if we're not sure we want to say something or we should speak. And so the dramas and traumas of life build up in our bodies, in the fabric of our body. And then those signals keep going into our nervous system and keep telling us who we are and how we have to respond and what we should be watching out for. And so zero balancing releases those tension patterns. So it allows a person to drop away what they're not and experience what they are underneath those patterns. And that can be a really significant and profound experience for people. That sounds incredible. Okay, I'm ready for my service. <laughs> well, that's the best way to know what zero balancing is because really, you and you heard my hesitation a moment ago, but you can talk about it in so many ways and the words just don't do justice because it's very experiential. It, it, the client receiving a zero balancing session knows what it does for them. They're having a body felt experience of energy and structure reorganizing in their body. They're having sometimes a dreamlike state or colors or it's kind of a, sometimes it's almost mildly hallucinogenic. And, and they're having an experience that they take with them, you know? So the best way to know what a zero balancing is to receive one for sure. So come on over. <laughs> well, actually, so <laughs> as a therapist, how would you describe it to a massage therapist that n- has never um, experienced it or um, maybe wants to learn more about it? Yeah, we like to say zero balancing is one of those well-kept secrets in body work. And so many professionals study zero balancing and offer it in their professional practices. And massage therapists are the largest proportion of people that, that practice zero balancing. Physical therapists also do chiropractors, osteopaths, occupational therapists, acupuncturists, um, psychotherapists if they want to add body work. So, yeah, I think it's particularly relevant to all those professions. I would say that zero balancing is a leading edge transformational touch therapy. So you could call it a manual therapy, you could call it a modality, but I like the term transformational touch therapy, because that's really what it's aimed at. It's aimed at letting go, as I said before, of what is not working, the tension patterns that are creating chronic trigger points, chronic musculoskeletal issues, chronic dysregulation of the nervous system, and letting the person feel how good they can feel when they're just back to their essence, just who they are. So it's a transformational touch therapy and it works. It's both energetic and structural. So we are 
you know, lifting and stretching and tractioning and doing all this like blissful work that feels really good. And at the same time, we're paying attention to the energy, the movement, the vibration, the tone that's moving through a person. And so the goal is to have the best possible functioning relationship between the structure of the body and the energy that animates it. So we're balancing that kind of a sailboat, you know, if you have a sailboat, the structure is the sail and the wind is the energy. And you have to have both a sail and the wind to, for your boat to go forward. And in zero balancing, the sail is the structures of our body, but they don't move on their own. They have to be energized by our life force energy. And so we want to, you know, have the right relationship. So the sail of our structure catches the wind of our energy and we have the most optimal function and um, expression of ourselves so it's a great it's a great addition to say massage therapy because it's the other part of the neuromusculoskeletal you know so massage therapists work on muscles and fascia and this adds the skeleton and the bones in and it's a beautiful way to incorporate those deeper tissues it affects the nervous system through the spinal nerve. Well, it sounds the That's way you described it with the sailboat. It just so, it sounds so beautifully artistic. I definitely think it's an art. I think that you know the teaching of zero balancing is all about how to touch very consciously, right. how to reach the whole person. If you're touching the structure and the energy of a person, you're touching all of them. So on the table is their structure, their physical aches and pains their mind, their mental clarity, and their cognition, their emotions, because that's energy, you know, and you're touching, you're clearly dancing with that the whole time. And the spirit of the person, depending on where your attention is and what a person brings, everyone comes in with an intention or a frame for the session. So it's very intentional work. And it can work on all parts of a person. And so the art there's a lot of science behind it, but I like to say it's an art and science. The art is really how to pay attention to a whole person and how to assess and evaluate and know when to slow down, when to speed up, when to pause, when to touch deeper. All of these things are built into the touch that we teach and the protocol of moving through the skeleton. I love it. I love it. It's just, it is such a beautiful dance between the medical practitioner and the patient or the client and the energy work between the two people. And I think as a body worker, we all have, you know, that tuned in, you know, knob that we turn on when we start the session. You know, I'm ready to listen to what your body has to say to me. Oftentimes, I'm sure this is the case for you too, when I see clients that seem very disconnected from their mind to their person, their body, I'm helping them try to reconnect themselves <laughs> for their brain and their body. What, what are the, the best benefits of receiving zero balancing on a regular basis, both physically and mentally? That's a great question. I think... The highest benefit is really what you just said. People feel more connected to themselves and more connected to the world around them. They're more embodied and they're freer to be who they really are. So in my mind, that's important world work. You know, when we're working on the energy of the body, we're working on the emergent process of who a person is, like receiving. I, I feel like we're, we receive ourselves all the time. You know, we are more than our bodies, our spirit, our soul, our being, whatever you want to say, however you want to phrase that. It's my experience that these bodies are like antenna. And, you know, my antenna picks up Michelle and your antenna picks up Julie, you know. And when the antenna is tuned by getting, you know, the, the fabric unsnagged and unwrinkled, so to speak, then 
we can receive our whole bandwidth. And I think that it's this kind of work, body work, especially very conscious body work, is medicine for our time. And it's medicine in real time because we're affecting the ability of a person to be in their body, which means we're affecting the ability of a person to be in their life. It means we're affecting the potential for a person to be in their relationships because you can't be in a functional relationship without really being in yourself. There's a lot more struggle. So one of the common things that I hear when people get zero balancing is they just feel more connected to themselves. They feel more themselves. They give themselves more of a break. They don't push themselves so hard or they become more motivated. They start that diet they wanted to start. They start exercising. You know, they just become more aware of their own agency in their lives and that they're not so reactive to the world around them, but responsive to their own being. And commonly people will come in befuddled. They'll say like, I don't know what you did, but like my partner says I should just keep coming because like we're sitting down and talking more and we're having dinner together. We used to just watch the news and now we're playing games and we're going on dates. So that zero balancing really tends to enliven people because of the piece of working on the energetic part of of the person as well. Uh, So you feel better physically, less pain, better mobility, lots of times things like chronic migraines, TMJ, sciatica, back pain, shoulder pain, definitely get better with zero balancing. We're working on the bones and the joints. But it's also very common for people to feel calm, peaceful, mental clarity, grounded, peaceful, like I said, motivated, present. And that's, again, why you have to, I think, really feel it to know what it is. It's a different It's a different state. I love massage therapy. I get regular massage therapy. I trade with my massage therapist. And zero balancing, it has a different quality to it. So that's another reason it's great for massage therapists because it's like a, it's like a, you you can do it within a massage. You can offer some zero balancing within a massage session, but you can also offer it as a standing um, adjunct to the work that you do as a massage therapist or occupational therapist, physical therapist, chiropractor. Does that answer your question? Yeah. This this is just phenomenal because, you know, it kind of reminds me of some of the work and, and research I've done in meditation and how it affects our bodies and the way we function. And it just affects everything from head to toe. Every system that we, yeah. use, you know, the nervous system, the, you know, everything, <laughs> you know, the cells are working more, you know, better for me in the long run because something in my brain feels a little more balanced. You know, I feel more in my body. I'm more connected. Like you said, I'm more grounded. That's how I feel after a good session of meditation. Yeah. Well, as I said before, zero balancing creates an an expanded state of consciousness or an altered state of consciousness. We've done research on zero balancing and we've done EEG measurements while doing zero balancing. And we see that people go into the higher brainwave states like gamma, theta, delta, the creative and less kind of linear mindset. You know, the beta waves are more like the the mindset that makes you remember to be on the podcast at four o'clock and to, <laughs> you know, and to get your groceries and to, you know, do the things you have to do at certain times and things like that. The tracks that we have in our lives. I go to work. This is how I drive. This is how I like to do my hair. This is, you know, like these things that we do over and over again that, that create literally who we are creates the patterns in our body. Right. And so then the patterns in our body if they're tracked and grooved in there so tight, then we keep responding in similar ways. So when you go into an altered state of 
awareness or an expanded state, which is a meditative state, during a touch session, then you have the opportunity of all that reprogramming that can happen when you're in an altered state, because we know in altered states of consciousness, we're less well held to those beta linear grooves that we get ourselves in. And so that's a place where we can really change the neural networks of the body, change the patterning where one response used to always get, or one input used to give this response. Now this input feels different and it has a whole different neurological cascade that can happen in inner perception. I like the term interoception, which is the body's ability to feel its inner landscape right? And so we don't talk about this that much, but it's, I think it's very important. And, it, and it's why we're doing what we're doing really is that the connective tissue of our body feeds into this particular part of our nervous system in, in primates in particular. That's a very direct path to the part of our brain that senses, that is our consciousness. It senses meaning, tone, innuendo, humor, sarcasm, you know, what's happening around, is this self or other? What do I, you know, how do I understand what's happening to me at this moment? And I think it's so fascinating, Julie, that like 85% of the nerve endings that go to that part of our brain where our consciousness is not only perceiving ourselves, but deciding what behavior is appropriate About 85% of those nerves come from free nerve endings in the connective tissue of our (laughs) body. Again, the fabric of our body is feeding in and saying, this is who you are. This is who you are. This is the best response in this situation. And so when we clear and lengthen and calm and get the energy flowing through those parts of our body, there's, I mean, it automatically there's different information coming yeah. into the nervous system. Well, you're changing your body's future because you've changed its history, I guess. <laughs> yes. And you can change your body's past as well and your history. I had an experience, oh gosh, many years ago. I actually wrote a book called Waking to Eden about this experience. But I had an experience where I was in the middle of being diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And I was going to my naturopath and she was great. I I was just like, Mary, I want to find out what's going on and I want to know what to do about it. I'm not really interested in a a name, a diagnosis. I just want to understand, help me understand what's happening. So I was on a mountaintop and I was meditating and I got this image and I was thinking to myself, why am I making antibodies against myself? Why am I attacking myself, right? That's the story of autoimmunity. Your body's attacking itself. I was like, why would my body do that? And then I got this image that was clearly a woman with an old faded apron on standing in a field. And she was looking out over the field and her hands were rough and knobby and kind of really worn. And she had this kind of forlorn look on her face and this look of futility. And I recognized her. I said, that's my grandmother's grandmother, you know, or my, and I knew that she was my ancestor. And, and I just said, what's happening here? And I realized in that moment that She was in my past, but I was in her future, and she was looking for her survival. She was looking for her family's survival, and I was her family's survival, right? We we made it. We're here. And in that moment, I also knew that I had to unify myself so I wasn't fighting against myself because I was carrying her futility. I was carrying her energetic in my DNA. That like, oh, I got off the bus at the wrong stop or, oh, it's not going to work out. That fear, you know, that, and I was like, that is not congruent with my life. That is not my life. So I was having this story from my ancestry. That's what the fabric that I'm talking about, you know, like that program is running in my body while I'm going around going, I don't know, life is good, but I feel afraid a lot, but I don't know, I'm sick, but what, you know, so 
So it, I went, I got some zero balancing sessions and I worked to unify, to let go, consciously let go of her energy and to just become who I am. And my autoimmune issue cleared up. And I do believe, you may not believe this, you would believe this, but I believe that she was healed at the same time. You know, time and space are bending and they're relative. And this is the newer physics. The zero balancing is very congruent and coherent with the newer sciences. And in fact, I'm a real science geek. And the more I learn about the newer sciences and the new possibilities, the more the the theory and the practice of zero balancing just gets supported. So I get really excited about like when it all comes together and it's all unified. <laughs> Well, that's why we have podcasts like this. So other geeks can geek out about our conversation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We love being geeks and we love having our geek listeners. And I'm so thankful for you explaining it the way you did. And I love your story about your ancestor. I think that's just super sweet. And, you know, I have been hearing a lot about neuro reprogramming and changing your history to redefine what your future looks like. And it sounds like hippy dippy, you know, kind of stuff. But like you said, there's real science behind it. Yeah. Have you in your experience in doing zero balancing had a lot of emotional people having a big emotional releases from this and bringing back past traumas? Yeah, that's a good question too. Yes, definitely emotional responses happen in zero balancing. I would kind of reframe how you said it in a way where, where gent, I would say in zero balancing, it tends to be gentle emotional responses happen. And part one, they're going to happen because they're in our hands, because that's part of the energetic structure of a person. Emotion is energy. Thought is energy belief is, you know, that's not a physical thing that you can put your hands on. That's an energy. So in zero balancing, there tends to be like, again, the work itself is very gentle and very respectful of the client's own natural developmental process. So we always are in witness consciousness. We don't push for an experience. We're just there to see where they're going and to help them navigate that and help create the possibility And we can talk about how that happens, you know, the actual touch skills. So sometimes a person will just come away feeling mentally clear. Sometimes their physical problems, you know, fall away. And sometimes they have emotion. And a lot of times they don't even, they don't come in feeling emotional. You know, a lot of times it's just kind of unearthed from their tissues and they'll have an emotion and it will come as like a wave often in zero bouncing and then it will calm back down again. So it's a little different than say like somato emotional release, which is, you know, like kind of really re-experiencing and bringing out those emotions. And I think it's because in zero balancing, I think it's a more of a gentle wave and it is released at the same time for sure. But in zero balancing, as I said before, we're touching into the bones and the joints. And zero balancing is a kind of a marriage of osteopathy and acupuncture and the Western anatomy and physiology and science and the Eastern concepts of chi and energy and healing. And in Chinese medicine, the bone is related to the essence of a person, the ancestral chi, the energy of conception. So in other words, like who the person really is in their essence before even in utero experiences, before early childhood experiences, before teenage experiences. And so we're touching into bone. So we're touching into the flows that are familiar to the essence of the person, the energy of who they were always meant to be, who they always have been. And the things that keep them away from who they always have been in their full empowerment are usually things they learned that get stored in their tissues. And then those become the filters through which they see or experience the world or perceive themselves or behave. And when those filters are, those veils or those filters are relieved by zero balancing work, 
the person can express their essence a little bit more. So sometimes when we're unwrinkling the fabric, so to speak, an emotion will kind of rise to the top. There'll be tears, there'll be joy, there'll be anger, there'll be, you know, whatever it might be. And it comes up. And the reason I think it's a gentle wave in zero balancing is because we have our hands in the bones, which are beneath in that essence level, right? Beneath the place where we had that drama or trauma that created that emotion. And as the person's beginning to feel the emotion, they're witnessing it from their essence. My hands are in the bone. They're witnessing it from their bones. So they're able to set, have the experience of, oh, this emotion is happening, but I'm, I'm my bones. I'm over here. Like I'm, so they can kind of see the turbulence, if you will, of the day, of the emotion, of the patterns that have been held in their body as something that's on them, but not, but it not, it is not them. So, you know, from that perspective of the bones, it's easier to let go, or I won't say it's easier, I don't want to be comparative, but it's it's quite elegant and beautiful to see a person just let go and become aware, like, I don't, that's not, I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would think that this takes a lot of intuition on the part of the practitioner, how do you teach that? Yeah, really good questions. Yeah, the developer of zero balancing is Dr. Fritz Smith. He's a he's an osteopathic medical doctor and acupuncturist. And he's going to be turning 95 and he's still teaching. And he's a robust and beautiful and really present and humble being. And he has never really liked the word intuition because he feels like that brings people kind of into this, like this realm of like, well, I'm feeling this. And he'll always say, put your hand, put your mind in your fingertips. So in zero balancing, we teach the touch skills that allow the information to come from a client into our very sensory mechanisms, you know, as a practitioner. So we teach many different skills. Some of them are touch skills and some of them are listening skills, how to really listen to a person. So we teach how to touch structure and energy at the same time. So we are touching the whole person and we're getting information about their structure as we're getting information about their energy. So we can tack that sail into the wind, right? So, so that, you know, if the sail is perpendicular to the wind, the boat will fall over right? Or if it's parallel to the wind, the boat doesn't go anywhere. But if you have that nice 45 degree angle, you know, so there's an optimal relationship there. And so how do you feel structure and energy and how do you feel the balance changing? And so we practice that. And we also practice a type of touch called interface, which is, a, which is about the boundary in our touch. So we have a very clear boundary where the client's energy begins and ends and the practitioner's energy begins and ends. So I'm not entering into the person's energy field or body. I'm using my structure and energy. I'm staying home in myself and I'm accessing the structure and energy of the person on the table. So they are they are shifting in and of themselves. And based on, like I said before, their natural developmental process or their own innate intelligence. So I don't have to decide for them. Their own nervous system is going, I don't need this sadness, futility, whatever it is. It happens in and of itself. It's magical. I love it. I became a chiropractor because I read about there are ways of working with the human body that respect the body's natural intelligence. And that's when I said, that's a boat that I can put my foot in, you know. That's the stream I want to be going down. And so zero balancing is very much aligned with that philosophy. So we teach how to touch structure and energy, how to touch it at the right with a really functional boundary, a very safe and respectful boundary so that we're not deciding what a person needs, but their body is. And we also teach about depth of touch. And the, the touch skills in zero balancing are fantastic and they're also relationship skills because touch is a relationship right so 
You can learn how to be at interface with a person. You can learn how to feel the structure and energy in a relationship. It's not just what we do. It's how we're saying those things, right? And the other piece of that is how deep into a person do we touch? So how do we learn when we're first in connection with the consciousness of another person? And how do we know how deep to go into that connection to have the optimal therapeutic effect? So all of those together become kind of riding the bike, if you will. You know, you brake, you pedal, you steer. When you put those together, there's, and then you're touching at the level of bone. So, you know, there's a lot of things on top of each other here. Then the, the magic begins to happen. We're also, you know, very clearly using intention and attention. And our, I would say when you ask the question about intuition, that intuition comes from intention and attention, right? So we're paying attention to our skill. We're paying attention to the field of the room, how it feels around us, the person's body language. There's a whole host of what we call working signs and zero balancing that tell us we're in connection with the person's consciousness, it's, which is another way to say we're in connection with the person's energy. So they might have belly gurgles, they, their eyes will do REM or rapid eye flutters, They're, they'll have little twitches in their hands or uh, the breathing pattern changes. So we get to watch, again, intuition or attention, you know, it, it all becomes part of the same thing, but we're watching the client move through the session and we can tell, like I said earlier, maybe, you know, when to pause or when to speed up our touch or when to touch a little bit deeper. So we're in this dance with them, a very palpable kinesthetic dance with the client. And that's what I mean when I say zero balancing is medicine in real time. It's like happening. You know, it's not something like, well, I'll do this for this and I'll do this for this. Or, you know, it's like, oh, what's happening now? How do I respond to that? How are they responding? What should I do now? So it's this lovely dance. Love it. Uh, you're so poetic when you talk about it. It just, <laughs> I love it, love it. It's just, it's incredibly amazing to listen to your heart speak on this subject because I can tell you've got a lot of passion around it. And I can't imagine how many people's lives that you've touched for the better. And, um, you know, and that's yeah. Work right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it is my honor to do this work. It fascinates me every time I have my hands on a human body. I learn so much every time I have my hands on a human body in this very, you know, kind of emergent way. And yeah, every time I teach the work, the questions that come in class and the interactions that come in class, we're all in this field of learning together. And it's not only learning about what zero balancing can do, but it's learning about who is this on the table. And we don't know. We are the stuff of the universe, you know, like we are stardust. We are, our bodies know how to make small human beings. And, you know, they know how to make the right enzymes so our hearts keep working and our livers keep working, things that we don't even know how to do. Our bodies know how to do that. So when you put your hands on a person on the table, you have your hands on the intelligence of nature. And I think we can learn about that forever, right? So in this way, I never get tired of the work. I'm always fascinated. I don't know what people are, the benefits that they're going to get, but I know I trust this work. I've been doing it for almost 30 years and teaching it for over 20 years. And it, I, you know, maybe a handful of times people have gone off, gone off my table and said, meh. You know, most people are like, how often do you do this? Like, wow, I feel so different. Like, should I come back? You know, and so people tend to like, uh, like I said, have a body felt experience that yeah. feels very good. They tend to talk about their zero balancing sessions to other people. I get tons of referrals because people are like, I want what she's having. Right? Like they, they <laughs> tell story. Like I, I did this thing, zero balancing. What is that word? I don't know what that means, but I don't know what you do, but it feels so good. And then people's families come in and it's been a great 
way to really build a very sustainable practice. Right. Because I think because I'm passionate about it, but also because I'm super curious and curiosity to me is, I don't know, it's kind of like the number one thing besides love in life. You know, if we can just stay curious and stay in love. Yeah, absolutely. I have an, another, uh, this is a massage therapist question for you. We massage therapists are well-versed in soft tissue manipulation. And when you talk about reaching bone, it kind of gives me a little bit of a scare or a shiver or a hesitation. <laughs> um, I'm sure you've seen that over the years in teaching <laughs> massage therapists. When you talk about reaching bone, can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, I've seen that over the years, but by the end of day one in a ZB class, I feel like the massage therapists are the most enthusiastic people because they see patterns, you know, like trigger points that are always in the trapezius or always in the gluteal muscles or, you know, and you can work in the skeleton underneath that and see some of that soft tissue change. So zero bouncing works in the, like the bone and the joints are our handle, but we're definitely working on all the connective tissue. We're working on fascia. We're working on soft tissue. We're going through the soft tissue to get to the bone. So we're deaf and we're touching the energy in the structure. So we're, we can't really leave it out, right? So we may not be doing a, a stroke or a trigger point or, you know, a tapotman or whatever the, the techniques in massage are, we're using a different technique that is zero balancing. But we, if you talk to massage therapists who are zero balancers, they'll say, oh, definitely some of those chronic things that I keep having to work on get better with, when I add zero balancing. So usually you tell that to a massage therapist and you're like, something else I can use to help my clients. You know, that's just a positive. But the technique of touching into bone you know, when I have a massage table in front of me or a treatment table in front of me, I, I teach it in a way whereas you can lean in to a massage table and go through the soft tissue of the massage table, if you will, right? The padding and the vinyl covering on it. And you can lean in and feel the wood underneath that it's made out of, right? Yeah. You can imagine doing that. And so that's what we do in zero bouncing. We lean, we're really using our whole body. We use our hands, of course, but we're, we, our body mechanics are such that we're using our whole body to lean into the skeleton and feeling the presence of the bone energy and getting used to what the bone feels like as we lean in. And then when we work on joints, we're working on ligaments because ligaments are what connect bone to bone. So we're working with joint play and learning how to assess the play in the joint. So we're, we can tell if the ligament engagement is too tight or too loose or nice and balanced. Then we do some work and we can reevaluate it and we can see if we've made a change. So hopefully awesome. that answers your question. Yeah, it, it really makes me connect to the connect the tissues <laughs> connect the ideas of zero balancing with orthopedic massage when you explained it that way because i've taken some orthopedic classes and i i think of the bone as the tool to manipulate the soft tissue right mm -hmm. and that's kind of how i felt like you it, it, very similar in what you were describing <laughs> In a, in a sense, and then you add the energetic component, the energy theory behind it, the touch skills. And I just, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not disagreeing with you, but my experience is that zero balancing is its own thing. You know, people often ask, is it like, oh, it's energy work? Is it like Reiki? And like, well, it's energy work. So yes, but not really, you know. Yeah. Is it like Traeger? No. Is it like Feldenkrais? Yes, but not really. You know, it's its own right. thing. As I said before, it was developed by a medical osteopath who is also an acupuncturist. And if I have time, I'll just tell you about how it was developed. So he was, Dr. Smith was an osteopath in California in the 1970s. But when the Eastern traditions were coming to the West, you know, like yoga and energy medicine and you know we were all like oh, what is this this is new so there was a 
at Esalen in California, there was going to be a demonstration by an acupuncturist, and there wasn't really much acupuncture in the United States at that time. So he went to this this presentation by the acupuncturist, and he saw that a man who had a contracture in his hand for a long time, and he had tried lots of osteopathy and you know orthopedist and whatever, and he saw a needle go in the man's leg. And the contracture let go to some degree. And the man was came out of the room like, it's a miracle. And Dr. Smith said, when he saw that, he knew that his medical model was broken, or if not broken, not complete. Because how did that happen? He didn't have a he didn't, he couldn't understand how that could happen. He said, Thank goodness the needle didn't go in the wrist, because then he could have like said, Well, it hit a nerve or it did something, do you know, like because it was yeah, connected to the same area. So this is the type of man he is and the type of energy and curiosity and humility that's behind zero balancing because I think it does matter where these things come from. He left his osteopathic practice and went to acupuncture school. You know, he went to England to study acupuncture. And then as he was studying acupuncture, he had this question like this Western view of osteopathy and this Eastern view and how do I do them at the same time? how do I have to not choose energy or structure, but do them at the same time? And at the same time, he was a devotee of Muktananda, who is a spiritual teacher and like a guru. And so he was sitting in a meditation with Muktananda and he had to get up early to leave the meditation because he had promised someone to bring them to the airport. So they were in this big meditation room with lots of people and he got up when it was time and he went to the back of the room and he bent down to put his shoe on and he said he received Shaktipat from Muktananda, which is a, like a spiritual blessing. He said it felt like a lightning bolt across the room to the top of his head when he bent over. And he didn't know what that was. And then he bent over to put his other shoe on and he received another lightning bolt of um, inspiration, I guess you could say. And he didn't tell this story until a long time ago. I mean, very recently. He... For a, a few weeks after that, he was actually in a little bit of a spiritual emergency where he wasn't practicing and he wasn't eating and he was just receiving all this information through his crown chakra that was basically the answer to his question, how do I work with structure and energy? How do structure and energy work together in the universe? And so he was receiving all this information and he finally called the ashram and said, I have to speak to Muktananda. I'm not doing well. And the woman said, have you said your mantra? And he said, no, you don't understand. I have to speak to Muktananda. I'm really in a bad way. I'm not able to really, you know, live my life. And she said, have you said your mantra? Anyway, he realized that he wasn't going to speak to Muktananda. And the phone call ended. And he said, well, what the heck? And he said his mantra. And it stopped. And so what he says is zero balancing is east meets west. Well, I say it's a little bit of north thrown on top. So there's a little bit of a spiritual ding. Something synthesized his question that was there. And a spiritual asking, it infuses the work. And when we do the work, we see that. There's something, there's a spark of something that's a little bit, unique to zero balancing and you have to have a session to really feel <laughs> what that is so there's a lot of similarity yes with like orthopedic massage or whatnot you know lo lots of things have this similarity we, we can release trauma from the body in, in so many ways and it's so beautiful to see that these days and zero balancing stands in its own field i think yeah so it is an added bonus to any practice is what I'm trying to say. It's a new thing, even if you're doing some of this in your other work. Right. That, what an incredible story. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just really amazing to hear um, how he came up with this idea. And, you know, the combination of you know, medical practices in both the Eastern and the Western hemispheres is, is something that I think every healthcare practitioner wants to believe is we're moving into that, you know, realm. 
where we have a little bit of both and, and we're taking good things from both sides of the coin and we're learning and merging into a much better society in that way. Sometimes it doesn't feel like there's progress. Sometimes yeah. it feels like we're going backwards. But I do believe on occasion we do have to go backwards to move forward in this capacity. I mean, the human body is so complicated. We're learning things all the time. And I'm just so thankful for people in our industry because we're losing that sense of touch in the medical practice. Yeah. We listen with our hands and we get so much information from that, as you clearly stated so beautifully. And I never want us to lose that, lose sight of that. It's so important. You probably hear it as much as I do, but people come to me all the time and, you know, tell me they've been to an orthopedist and, and they've been to their general practitioner and, you know, they're good doctors. But they said, you know, they never touched me where it hurts, you know? And so you touch a person and the nerves start to fire. I mean, that we are sensory beings. So it makes so much sense that as those tissues that you're touching, no matter what you're doing to it, really, but that's sending information into the nervous system that's telling the body what to do about it, right? So touch is immediate. It's immediate. And it's essential. We know from research that Life doesn't go on without touch. Elderly people decline. Newborns don't thrive. People need touch because that's what we're made for. That's what our whole sensory mechanism, that's why we have a body. We have a sensory body because we feel with our body. And yeah, I think it's so important. I think we go back sometimes, Julie, because it's like we're knitting, you know, and you go back and catch the yarn and you bring it up and we're knitting a new fabric of how to move forward. But I think of this kind of work as evolutionary. You know, I think we are evolving into understanding why we have bodies and how we should use them and therefore how they can stay healthy. Because really, We've been in the dark. We've been like, oh, yeah, I'm me, and I just go, and my gallbladder doesn't work, and I'm this and that. But, like, but why? Like, what's going on? You know, like, how are we in our, how are we in our bodies? And when we are, I think of it as world work, you know, because when we are embodied and at peace and calm and in love with our own lives and our own bodies, then that's what we see in other people and that's what we see in the world and that's the world we create. It's going to happen one body at a time. Preach it, sister. Or, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> one class at a time. The reason I love to teach zero balancing is that then more people I start to touch on that level and then all the people that they touch uh, you know what I mean? So it just becomes exponential from there. So I am so honored to, t to teach this work and so honored to be in this conversation today. Thank you. I, I'm so appreciative for both the work that you've done and your, your willingness to share and educate others, especially massage therapists. Sometimes we um, and chiropractors don't always you know, go together like salt and pepper. Sometimes it's more like oil and vinegar. But I love the fact that we can work together to achieve um, something great for our patients. Yeah. yeah. Especially something so cutting edge and, um, you know, on the verge. It feels like we're on the verge of just something really amazing in this mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. It's human calls out. <laughs> yeah, humanity wants to be on Earth in its highest form. That's the Tao, you know, that's the way it is. Why, why are we here in the first place? Humanity wants to be here, but we haven't known enough about the brilliance of our bodies and the opportunity, the vehicle that we've been given. And when you touch a body with reverence, witnessing this mind, body, spirit, emotion in that person, and that whole person can be felt and they feel all of that being felt, then we're bringing more of humanity onto the planet. And, and, you know, then we'll have more authentic fields of love and connection. And 
the world will be a better place. Let's do it. I agree. I love right. it. And I'm singing Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, it. that's what makes me, that's what makes me tick. <laughs> so Michelle, you're going to come visit us in Plano, Texas. Tell us a little bit about your, and the dates you're coming and what you're going to be teaching and how we can register. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to be coming to Handcrafted Therapy, which is Julie's center in Plano, Texas, uh, May 4th to the 7th, and Zero Balancing One. So it's the first Zero Balancing class in a curriculum, so it's the place to start. It's a four-day class. There's 25 continuing education units for massage therapists in Texas, and possibly OTs and PTs, but those have to be kind of figured out person to person, but we know we have national approval for the massage therapist. So there is 25 credits. So it's a four day class. It's a big class. It's an immersion in learning theory and practice. And by the end of the four days, people can do a zero balancing session and we will. And it's a lot of fun. We form a field together. We learn together, become part of a zero balancing community with knowing the language and so forth. And I'm super excited I love teaching zero balancing. So, yeah, I hope people in the Texas area can find out about it. And we're going to post links. Well, how much does the class cost? Oh, the class is $595 if you register two months in advance, which would be March 4th. And you can register at zerobalancing.com. And that you go at the top of the pay- open page the homepage, you'll see classes and training or something like that. And just click that and you'll get a list of all the classes and you go down by date and you'll see the one in May in Plano, Texas. And you can register right online or you can call me and or email me at bones at sover.net, S-O-V-E-R.net. And I will register you if you have any trouble with that. And if you wait to register for a month to a month before, then it's six ninety five, and and after a month, it's seven ninety five. So registering early really helps us know how many people are coming, how many tables we need, and supplies, booklets, and so I really appreciate if one you would join us, and two you register by March fourth to get the best price. Awesome. Very awesome. Okay, well, I'm excited to have you here in Dallas or near Dallas. I know there's a lot of people anxious about wanting to take your class. So I really hope that they listen to this podcast and sign up for the class because I think this was phenomenal. I'm so thankful for you and your work and your um, willingness to share with us today your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if I could just say, Julie, my email, uh, my website, maybe you were saying this while I was trying to uh, plug my phone in, but my uh, website is uh, drmichelledusset.com. And there's lots of videos and essays on zero balancing, testimonials on zero balancing classes. So anyone that's remotely interested, please check out my website and I think you'll find a lot to look at. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Shell. We're very Thank you. for you. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you soon. Thank you. Take care. Take care.